Okay. Uh, knock, knock. Who's there? <laughs> Open the door. <laughs> In the early 80s, if there was no alternative to Margaret Thatcher's politics, there was an alternative in comedy. Alternative comedians were as bored with the status quo in the comedy world as they were with status quo in the pop charts. The cosy sitcom living room was about to be vandalised. You just open the plopping door! <laughs> oh no! The front door's exploded! A lot of the charm and attraction of the young ones was. It's not its shockingness, but its surprise, its power to surprise and excite, because you didn't know what was going to happen next. Anything could happen. Literally anything could happen. It took all those uh, sitcom rules and premises, which had been carefully built up and crafted, uh, and used them for its own purposes, which was to invert them and subvert them. This is actually very serious. <laughs> The wave on the crest of which they rode was the arrival of the punk ethic into, into comedy. That was not reflected on television. That kind of humour that was couched in that kind of excitement and madness and the destruction, the humour of destruction, the violence was only there in things like Tom and Jerry. It's funny, but being ill makes me lose my usual tolerant and easygoing approach to communal living. One of the things people said to me about the young ones before it went out, and there was a debate about whether it ever could go out or not, was uh, you've broken one of the basic rules of sitcom. You, none of these people are likeable. Surprise! <laughs> All right, what's a happy word? Six? Six? It would have been six if you killed him, Michael. Ah, uh, that's 22. Fair enough. Um, I don't want to play this game anymore. Rick, shut up! <laughs> We took our frames of reference from what we knew. So suddenly they were talking about, you know, um, the political um, naiveties and pomposities of students and youth. You know, I, as a young person, was terribly serious at times about my politics, and I found that great fun to put that into Rick, you know. You know, I'm a writer at the gates of dawn and I take no prisoners, you know. I'm, yeah, take that, Mrs Thatch. Neil, the bathroom's free, unlike the country under the Thatcherite junta. <laughs> Neil, are these lentils South African? Well, uh, you bastard! You completed utter bastard! Why don't you just go out and become a policeman? Become a police! I get the right to my MP. But you haven't got an MP, Rick. You're an anarchist. Ah, well, then I shall write to the lead singer of Echo and the Bunny Men. In the 70s, you'd have to be there at 7.30 on the dot, and then everyone would talk about it the next day. It was a totally different thing. Oh, have we got a video? Yes, we've got a video! The Young Ones was different, because that was the first one that we taped. We had videos. We'd rewind our favourite bits, you know. Oh, have we got a video? Yes, we've got a video! Well, in my days, we'd, we'd, we'd sat around and bombed out all weekend and listened to the entire canon of the Dylan records. You know, we'd had a, a Dylan weekend. And, and people were doing that with the young ones. People were getting all six episodes and just playing them through on the, on the VHS in, you know, in a kind of party for a day. You've bought me a present. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What do you do with it? <laughs> no, don't tell me, don't tell me, I'll guess. <laughs> it's a telescope. There's been some very flattering speculation about the young ones over the years. Oh, it was it was a it was a new look at the traditional family format. Was was Neil the mother? Was Rick the the daughter? Um, I think there is a tiny grain of truth in that. In that it actually is in the tradition of sitcom. In that it's a group of people, a family of sorts, living together in a house. And many a, many a sitcom has gone along those lines. Oh God, we're literally closing down. It's only half past nine. That's BBC One, Rick. Oh, right. <laughs> Not this band again. They're always on. Crap! What about some Hawkwind or Marillion? <laughs> yeah, shut up, you fascist Tories. No one tells me what time to go to bed. Go to bed, Spotty. <laughs> I was so new to telly, I just wanted to do something I wanted to watch. Um, 
and I didn't want that to tail off. I wanted to stop it now while it's at its height. We're young ones, bachelor boys, crazy, mad, wild-eyed, big-bottomed anarchists. <laughs> Look out! Cliff! <laughs> The young ones took sitcom closer to the edge than ever before and then promptly drove over it. Alternative comedy had torn up the sitcom rulebook for good. Phew! That was close! 